It's just to give a little bit of background on why we're doing what we're doing is uh, the village of Hortonville, frankly our entire zoning code is very outdated, <laughs> but um, right now our commercial area of the downtown, there's no differentiation in the regulations for the downtown as there is for say like Gilbert's. And we have to recognize that they're very distinct and very different areas. Um, you know, it, an example I always use is like that big um, neon sign, uh, the electronic message center that's up by Gilbert's, really wouldn't be appropriate in the downtown area. But the way our zoning district is, or our zoning regulations, is we don't have any of that separation. So we recognize that in order to try to restore some of the character of the downtown, and to maintain what's still there, <clears throat> we really should implement and put into place some kind of zoning regulations that are specific to the downtown and you know, recognize the historic character and the fact that it's you know, a um, tight, you know, closer together, things like that, very different than your retail out at the ends of the village. So we started working on a downtown zoning code. So right now this is just draft. The process, well, and I'll, I don't want to get too far into it because actually that's, that's Tom's presentation. So that's what prompted the village to initiate the process. And then Tom is with the East Central Regional, uh, East Central Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission. And the Planning Commission provided is providing services to the village um, in assistance in writing the code. So um, it's been a joint effort with the village and East Central, with East Central doing all the heavy lifting. <laughs> And, and the village coming up with, this, with the ideas, so. <laughs> Asking them, telling them what to do. So, with that, I'll give it to Tom. Well, welcome everyone. Um, just tonight, we wanted to get out and share with the public uh, what we've done to date. I'll get my laptop out of the screen here. Uh, with that, we'd start off with some introductions, uh, provide a background of the project, um, try and kind of cover part of that. We'll go through our task force that's worked on this. Uh, talk about the outreach we've done for it, the research we've done for it as well in drafting the uh, draft of the code, um, and, and then we'll go through an uh, overview of the update itself, and then uh, just talk about the next steps. Um, a couple things, at any time, please feel free to ask questions. Um, we want this to be as much as of a discussion as we can. Um, so there I just are, thought, given that it's a smaller group, I thought I'd just put one at each oh, table. Yeah. Yep. Um, so that map there is, again, that's in draft form, nothing's been adopted. These are uh, properties that could be included in this zoning district. So, first off, just to kind of get a sense, I know quite a few of you in the room, but... I'll give it to Therese since you, you've been on the test. <laughs> um, are you just going to raise a hand if you're a resident of the village? Okay. Uh, business owner? And then uh, any village officials or decision makers? <laughs> Part of the board? Okay. Anybody I missed? I don't think I did. <laughs> so, um, then I started this. The, one of the, the big motivations for doing this is the potential Highway 15 bypass. Um, that would take a lot of traffic away from the downtown, as we all know, which would be a good thing because it would allow for a lot of safety improvements, allow for a lot more kind of traditional downtown, if you will. Um, in doing some of the research for the project, there's been a lot of planning for in focus on the downtown through various efforts. And, and the, the downtown is, is, for the most part, intact, which isn't true in every community in the area. Um, there's somewhat of a unique nature of the downtown. There's a lot of character with the existing buildings. Um, and then lastly, the, the current zoning, um, Diana will do this as well, is that it's kind of a one-size-fits-all, whether it's out anywhere in the village. Um, and as, as communities grow, they got to recognize that there's different types of commercial uses, whether they're located on a highway or a downtown, just like there's different types of residential units, whether they're a single-family home or a multi-family home. And that needs to be recognized through a zoning ordinance. Um, just a rendering of the Highway 15 bypass, like I said, this would take a lot of traffic out and around the, the downtown of the village. I'm sure you're all aware of that. Um, our task force for this, uh, we've had kind of a mix of people involved with this. Uh, we've had a couple of plan commissioners, a couple of folks in the Historic Preservation Commission. 
Um, they've been the primary decision makers. We've provided information to them. They've reacted to it and let us know their, their thoughts and opinions on this. Uh, Billy Staff, it's mostly been Diane. She's been great at if, if there's been times where people have asked for more information or something unique about the village, she'll do her homework and, and come back to the next meeting about it. And uh, myself, I, I'm here to facilitate the project, to provide information, to do research. I'm not a part of your decision-making process. I don't have a vote in it. I just do a lot of listening and then translate that into a, a draft um, zoning code. Um, outreach. Anytime you um, work on a community's ordinances, you, you need to do a lot of outreach to make sure the community is informed that there's multiple ways people can voice their opinions, they can chime in, that they have, have those opportunities. I think Diane's done a great job with this. Um, there's been a lot of things on the, the signs as you come into town. Um, there's been local business outreach, sounds like the police department went door to door today. <laughs> Um, local media, there's been some press coverage. Uh, the Village Voice newsletter, the Village maintains a Facebook page that's had a lot of uh, information on it. And just updates to the Village Board itself. The whole goal of this, like I said, is to make sure people have a chance to review it, they're comfortable with it, they can ask questions about it, and at the end of the day when it gets to a point where it's in front of the Village Board, there's hopefully no surprises or there's no, hey, I didn't hear about this or people were trying to hide this from us. <clears throat> Um, research, what you're going to see in the draft as you look through it uh, is really based on looking at a lot of similar sized communities with a lot of similar downtowns. I, and I say that because I, I think it's important to note that there's nothing in here that would be, boy, you guys are the, the lab for this one, or we're going to see if this works. This is all um, tried and true and tested in other communities. And it's kind of bringing together some best practices based on feedback from the the task force have been working with. And it's also a reflection of the, the village plans as well as what the comprehensive plan states and what some other planning efforts have shown. So the update itself, I'm just gonna go through kind of the, the main um, topics, if you will, for it. Uh, the first one is the intent. Uh, most zoning ordinances have intent statements at the beginning of their district. That, on top of a, a literal description of what's required in the zoning ordinance, allows the reader to kind of understand generally what the community's looking for with the particular zoning district. So within this one, it just it makes a couple of statements. Um, it, this isn't all of them here, but these are the things that really stuck out throughout the process, that the downtown is a, a unique and historical space, that we're looking for a mix of land uses. We don't want it to be solely one type of use that that we want a mix of land uses. Um, that incorporates some natural landscape features. You know, there's quite a bit of um, um, a train difference between the, the main road coming through it and down in the, in the back area here with the, the river and the creek coming through it. And that it recognizes walkability. Uh, with the, the reduction in traffic, hopefully that's gonna give people a lot more ability to get out and walk around and to spend more time in stores. Uh, again, just to kind of demonstrate, this is a historical picture of Main Street. A um, couple things that we noted throughout this. One, you can see a very raised sidewalk there. Um, I don't think that raised sidewalk would work the way <laughs> traffic flies through right now. Another kind of thing that stuck out as we were looking through historical photographs is the amount of canopies over or windows. Um, and then at, you know, at that time, we had the, the power lines all on one side of the street. So th this is some things we looked at in doing the research for it. Um, uses. Next in, in the draft ordinance, you're going to see a table that shows um, are divided into permitted and conditional uses. Again, this is a standard way of, of doing zoning. Um, a permitted use indicates that, hey, this is expected to, to be in this type of district. Um, there won't be any additional requirements if the development um, complies with it. A conditional use means that, boy, this might be something that we wouldn't regularly see in an area like this. Therefore, the plan commission would want to take a look at it and have a little bit further review on it. That does allow the plan commission to apply um, conditions to it, thus the, the conditional use term. Um, moving down to the bulk requirements, this is kind of the, the building envelope or, or a bit about you know sizes of the buildings and the lots and things like that. So we have our setbacks. 
Um, how far can a building be set back in the street? How far can it be set back from a, 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 a side yard? Uh, things of that nature. Um, parking is an important thing. We didn't really make an adjustment on this one because the, the uh, village's current ordinance we thought uh, had a good parking set up for it, so we didn't change that at all. And then just the last thing is a, a truck unloading areas. Uh, we certainly wouldn't want to see uh, some sort of delivery truck holding up traffic as they're coming through town. Any questions at this point? No? Okay. Um, design guidelines. This takes it to another step where we're, we're trying to create that look and feel that historic downtown nature. Um, we did come up with that storefront, so this would be the the part of the building that faces the, the main kind of uh, road coming through, if you will, shall include brick and stone. And if you look at it, most of the buildings downtown here already have that. Um, so that really wouldn't be a, a significant change. It, it would just become a requirement for it. Uh, the next, we have a statement that we encourage building materials and colors that have a historic nature. We're not requiring it, but we're trying to get that look and feel, and, and we think there's some opportunities to work with uh, the developer or the property owner with that. Uh, the next area is signage. Uh, we've had quite a few discussions about this. Signs are a big thing for every community and every type of zoning district. Uh, I think we've come up with a, a balance that's appropriate for the downtown. Um, there's a couple tables you'll see in there. Uh, the first one kind of identifies it by what type of sign it is and how many um, would be allowed per property or per tenant. Um, from there it goes through the, all the way down to the size of it. Um, and, and I think the big thing here is that it, it does recognize that visibility and advertisement is important for the lifeblood of a business. I mean, you need to get your name out there. And this is a, a good balance between having that ability to advertise but not doing it where all you're seeing is sign after sign and your sign is getting lost in a, a sea of signs. Um, and that really is the, the bulk of the draft. Uh, again, I, I, I use the term draft because it is that. So we're going to continue to go on through a uh, public review period. Um, obviously, we want to get a lot of eyeballs on this and get people's reaction to it. Um, more public review will come as this thing moves into plan commission and then to village board. There's going to be some additional opportunities for the public to comment on it. Uh, as far as the ordinance adoption itself, so this would be a legally adopted part of the village's zoning ordinance, um, it would go to plan commission, um, they would review it, they would have a chance to comment on it, to make changes to it. From there they would make a recommendation to your village board. Same thing, village board would look at it, um, take public input on it if there's any, and uh, make changes as needed and then adopt it. I think I got that right, didn't I, Diane, as far as the process? I'm sorry, I was reading this document. <laughs> <laughs> um, just that we vote for plan commission, they can make any changes from there, they'd make a recommendation to yes. the full village board. Yes, and there will be a public hearing. Yeah, yes. so it would fall, I believe, a class two notice. There would be a couple of notices for it. Um, and that's what I got. Questions? Comments? Concerns? Are there supposed to be some design guidelines in this copy? Yeah, there should be. Um, Yeah, I don't see it either. I wonder if I... Oh. Page numbers follow the page numbers. Yeah. I think that was something we added after, but we, I must not have included in here. Okay. Some of the design guidelines, I'm, I'm kind of going from memory, um, had to do with the uh, colors. We wanted to have it more earth tone type mm -hmm. colors. Um, the materials. Yeah, and we'll certainly get that an updated handout for everybody and we can get up on the building. Right, I'm just trying to remember though since since we're out here, what was yeah. the, um, under there's some material requirements. Um, uh, this brick and stone on the, the storefront. On the front, front. yes. Yeah. And yep. then kind of historic um, colors were encouraged. 
Yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely get that updated though. There was and with windows, I think there was something with the windows, um, something with a percentage that could be covered. That's um, up yeah. no more than typically no more than twenty five percent of those storefront, you know, street facing windows covered with like signage. And the one thing I got to explain on here too is, is um, this typically uh, generates some comments is that you know this is uh, so much of it is about signs. And I just need to explain a little bit about that is because because of a recent uh, case law, a court case that happened in 2016, that um, basically made it uh, that municipalities could not regulate signs based on content. And it was taken so strictly that now, for example, we cannot, and I actually noticed two cases in here where we have to re yeah. rework it because one, for example, in here is called a menu sign. Well, how do you know it's a menu sign unless you read it? So now it's saying that now this this case law is saying that we're regulating it based on what the content is. So the regulations in, with the village for signage are going to be much more complicated because the best way I can describe it is typically when it quacks like a duck and it looks like a duck, you call it a duck. Because of this new case law, if it quacks like a duck and looks like a duck, we got to do everything but call it a duck. Just describe the duck. <laughs> but we can't call it that. So we cannot call it a real estate sign. We have to describe it. We can't call it a, um, uh, a sign for a church because now you're saying if you don't read it, how do you know it's a church? So we can't call it a church sign or a school sign. So I just wanted to explain that a little bit as to that is why the section on sign got so complicated is because of that case law. <laughs> I think the, um, the, the biggest, the kind of category, you know, putting it in a category, the three biggest changes um, or, or you know, way that we're separating out the downtown from the rest of it is one is the use um, we're not going to, you know, we don't want to allow, you know, say, large lot car dealerships um, or, you know, outdoor farm machinery implements. Stuff like that just is not suitable for the downtown. Even, even a drive-through, you know, Dairy Queen is great where it is, but it really doesn't make sense in this one block downtown district. So the uses are, uh, have, have altered from what the general commercial is. Um, as Tom was, and we were talking about with Rick as well, is the um, design standards. We're really, we don't have any for outside the downtown area, but we want to establish some for the downtown area of that, that brick, brick and wood type thing or siding. Um, and then lastly, the signs. We're going to change the village, village wide, our sign regulations to comply with the case law. But um, the thing that was specific to the downtown is the way it's lit, for example, and the size. And I gave that example before of the, the large electronic message center out at um, Century. It, it, it suits there. It's, you know, it, it, it makes sense, but it wouldn't make sense down here. Um, and same with the one at AFS Auto. That's, it's not that it's so huge, but it's still that, that glaring light. It's just not appropriate for the downtown, so we want to keep it more subtle and a different type of lighting. So I, those are the three main things. The uses, the um, uh, signs. signs, and no, the other one I'm thinking design of, standards. thank you, design standards. Those are the three areas that we really concentrated on. I know we've got four members of the task force here with Claire and Julie and Lou and Rick. Do you have anything else to add um, as we are going through it? So we want that whole, when you step into the downtown area, you know that you're into something special. Mm -hmm. There's something special about being down here. Um, it's different than the rest of, of the, like a residential area. It's different than an industrial park. It's different than a retail area. It's a different kind of retail. It's a vibe. It's, it's an experience, not just a location of where you're standing. You're actually experiencing something a little different. Destination. It, it's, it's, to pull people from the trail, to pull people from the bypass, to to bring that foot traffic down there. But it was, to me, being on this task force, how can we create an experience that when you're down there, you know 
that you are down someplace special. Is that kind of the vibe we wanted? I mean, yeah. Yep. Great. So I think, um, like I said, as far as next steps, uh, if you keep an eye out on what it starts to move towards plan commission, and uh, they'll have a chance to look at it, and then uh, on to the full village board. And I, um, I anticipate going to the planning commission, planning and zoning commission, um, probably for their September, maybe October meeting, depending on how busy things are. <laughs> So uh, planning commission in September or October, and then um, and, and their meetings are the first Tuesday of the month. Right, Rick? I forget. <laughs> <laughs> it just it. I believe it's the yeah. first Tuesday of the month. And then um, after that, it would go to the village board, and then we will have the hearing at the village board, and those are held on the first and third Wednesdays of the month. So I, I think a reasonable time frame is that we're probably looking for passing it in October. Okay. If you have any questions, anybody, we'll hang out afterwards. And um, if you come up with questions afterwards, feel free to call us at the village office. Yep. Or, you know, Rick's cell phone number directly. <laughs> <laughs> I can give out his address. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. And I'm not familiar with you. I haven't met you, so I was just wondering if I